Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Retro Rivals. Today I have a special project for Halloween. So I decided to do a Jason Voorhees mask. I went to Walmart and bought a cheap $1.99 mask. It looked like a Frisbee with holes in it. I had my husband try it on. I'll pop that picture up and I'll also pop the picture up of it not on his face and it just it's horrible it's plain white it needed some gen touch needed some sprucing up and i just couldn't let him wear it like that so what we're going to do today is go through a quick and easy tutorial of how to turn a cheap walmart hockey mask that was in the halloween section uh, into a pretty cool Jason Voorhees mask. Hope you guys enjoy it. The first order of business is to make our mask look less like a Frisbee. Scott heats it up with a heat gun to make it more moldable and pliable. Next, we sand the mask with a heavy grit sandpaper. To be honest, this was a happy accident. I wanted to use what I had on hand and the heavy grit added extra texture, which really helped add character. It is important to make sure you remove the entire sheen off the mask as we are using craft paint and want to get the best application possible. Of course, you can buy certain paints that adhere better to a glossy surface, but it's always advisable to sand first. You definitely don't want to finish a project only to have your paint chip off. Make sure you wipe the entire mask down with a clean, dry cloth. There will be a lot of dust particles and this will affect the way the paint adheres as well. I wasn't happy with the amount of dust still left on the mask, but nothing a clean, damp cloth wouldn't take care of. I know this might seem a little extra, but I've painted enough times to know that starting with the perfect canvas is key. Now you're ready for paint. And speaking of paint, time to mix up the perfect concoction of color. Jason Voorhees' mask is an ever slightly yellowish beige. We mix primarily white and brown, to begin with, adding more than we would likely need. Make sure to mix your colors well. The extra care and attention to detail always pays off in the end. Next, add a bit of a bright canary yellow. Just a little bit now, as it's always easy to add more if needed. Finally, we've made it to the paint stage. Now is not the time to get overzealous and drench your brush. Apply an even layer of paint to the surface of the mask. Try to avoid drifts as that is only more cleanup you'll have to do later. This is always my favorite part of the painting process, adding detail. It's what will make any project pop and come to life. For this particular project, we need to add depth and texture. Our rich brown will help the mask look aged and dirty. I decided to add my layering colors while the base coat was still damp. It makes for way less work. Word to the wise, don't overblend as you'll just end up with one solid color. Don't panic if this happens though, you can always let this layer dry and reapply your base. The same thing goes with adding too much color. Just wipe off the excess or blend it in. There's really no right or wrong way to paint. As long as you're happy with the finished project, who cares how you got there? As you can see, I use many different techniques and tools. Paintbrushes are always depicted in any image of an artist crafting his or her masterpiece. But I will use anything on hand, even my hand. A sea sponge is a fantastic object to add texture. It's one of my go-to texturing tools. Don't worry, I'm not adding a bright white line to Jason's nose. As you might have guessed, I'm adding highlight. 
We want the nose to stand out and be a bit more prominent on the face. By adding white and blending it out to create a little sheen, we can achieve this effect. Okay, so here's the step you need to be a little bit more delicate with. Black paint can go bad really, really fast. Add a little bit at a time and then blend. Add and blend, add and blend. Resist the urge to add lots and then blend. You just went to the trouble of perfecting your texture. Do you really want to end up with a gray mask? I'm adding black to all my edges. As you can see, I want the eyes to really stand out. I want depth and I want them to look hollowed and sunk in. Again, I'm going in with my fingers and blending because they allow me the extra control I need during the step. After you're done adding black, you get a nice break. Your mask needs to dry before the next step. Everyone knows Jason's mask has those iconic red marks on both cheeks and across the middle of the brow bone. I've decided to use painter's tape, hence the reason we needed the mask to be dry. We've made it, the final step. Let's add some red paint. Again, don't oversaturate your brush or the red paint could bleed through the edges of the tape. Also, I'm not really loving the contrast. I was hoping for a more crimson red. In this case, I'm just going to add a little black to the pot of red paint and remedy it that way. Yep, much better. Okay, let's peel off that tape. I recommend removing your tape while the paint is still a bit tacky and flexible. Nothing ruins an edge quite like ripping off a big old chunk. Side note, just be careful since you also don't want to bump your paint and end up smearing it everywhere. But if you do, just tell everyone it was intentional blood splatter. A machete is a superb tool, but it makes for messy work. Great job. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, here's the finished product. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. As you can see, or maybe you can't from this angle, painting it after I sand it enhanced some of those scratches in there. Um, it really helped age it. Um, also using the different uh, colors and layering them also really helped age it as well. Just remember, when you're doing something like this, there's no wrong way to really do it. Um, I used brush. There was times I used my fingers to smudge in some paint. I also had a sea sponge, there's times I used that. And yeah, just basically keep blending until you get the desired level of uh, shading and everything. And it just, you wanna age it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just do it to your personal taste. And the only thing you don't wanna do is over blend because then you end up with one solid color. So really uh, just, do your best and I hope you guys really enjoy the finished product. I really enjoyed making it. And until next time, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We have videos out every Tuesday and Friday at 1 p.m. Atlantic time. Uh, this month we're doing a whole month of Halloween. And uh, yeah, so if you guys like that, please tune in for the rest of October, obviously for those specials and we will see you next time. Bye.